Good morning guys. So this video is just a step-by-step uh, -step plan on how to use the Mapmaker 101 guide that you see on screen to design your own fantastical map. You are a fantastical cartographer and you are going to design a fantastic map. So the guide will be there for you and you need to start first by sketching in your sketchbook. So you're going to have your sketchbook and you're going to have the Mapmaker 101 and you're going to go through one step at a time. You're going to work on your sketch until you get your map just how you want. If you think of ideas that you want to add that are not on Mapmaker 101 or if you want to just straight up copy ideas from my map examples, I have lots of examples, uh, that, then you can go ahead and do that. I do not mind you copying my examples. Um, that's what they're there for. So I will have those out available as well and also probably I will have them on the board from time to time. So you start with step one and you go through and you sketch. When you're done with your sketch, when you think you've got it and you've got all the pieces and you've got all the parts, then you need to show it to me and then I will give you your tea stained paper. That's what we call in the art world pre-antiqued paper. Uh, it looks like an old-fashioned map, that a paper that a map would be on. Make sure you write your name and code on the back, and then you take your sketch and you copy it onto that in pencil. Now, after you've sketched everything out in pencil, you may go over your drawing with ink. Now, I have Sharpie markers. Sharpie markers are made from permanent ink, so they will not run because the final part of this process will be to add color to it with watercolor and colored pencil. So sketch first using the map maker one on one 101 get your design the way you want it show it to me i'll approve it i'll give you your pre-antiqued paper and then you start copying your map design onto your paper and this process is going to take us a couple of weeks so buckle down uh don't think it's all going to be all over like when you go through the drive through at mcdonald's this takes time we're making art and your map is going to be super duper awesome, be something that you'll be really proud of. You're probably going to want to hang it up in your room somewhere or your mom's going to steal it from you because she's going to love it so much. All right. And most of all, have fun. OK, so in this video, you see that I have already created my design. And now I have my pre antiqued paper and I have a pencil. So even uh, even though I'm pretty confident in my drawing skills, I am still using a pencil to sketch all of this out. And the reason why is because I want to have my design thrown down on my paper as neatly as I can and I need to be able to erase in case I make mistakes because the inks that we are using are not erasable. They, Once it's there, you either have to live with it and make it work or you're out of luck because you only get one of these papers, guys. It took me a long time to get these papers ready for you and I only have so many. I only made enough for everybody to have one. So um, sketch with a pencil first. It's always good to sketch with a pencil first and then you can erase. Okay, I'm gonna speed the video up here. I'm making my own music. drawing some maps. Yes or no, I'm weird. Okay, so in this next part, you're going to see me grab my coffee cup. And I'm going to use my coffee cup as a circle tracer so that I can create my compass. So the compass doesn't go straight smack dab in the middle of your paper. It goes off to the side somewhere. So I picked a nice little spot in my ocean that's nice and empty to make my compass. And then I'm looking at the map maker guide here and you can see the design that I've picked out for my compass. There's a lot of different ways to do compasses and in the examples that I've shown, you'll see them. You can do the compass however you want, but it should be a circle. It should s show uh, north, south, east and west. Uh, what is it? How does it go? Never use moldy socks. No, no, wait, that's not right. Well, you know what I'm talking about. So um, sketch, your, sketch your compass out. Use a ruler. That's always the best thing to do is to use a ruler. And you should be good. And use a pencil so that you can erase.
I have lots of circle tracers, by the way. I have solo cups, I have Powerade caps, whatever size you want your compass to be. I like a big compass. I like it to be nice and big. Okay, this next part that I'm going to work on is my key. Not all maps have a key, but most of them usually do. The key is kind of like the little guide to all the icons that you include. <clears throat> and those can be anything. Mine's going to have some things like mountains, rivers, forests. Those are all things that I include in my drawing. I've got some mountain ranges, I've got some rivers, I've got some forests, I've got some outposts. So what I'm going to do here, I'm using my sticky notes here as a straight edge. You don't always have to... Ooh, that was an ant that just crawled across my camera. Did you see that? That was weird. Anyways, um, you don't always have to use a ruler. You can use pretty much any straight edge as long as you're careful and you hold it down nice and tight to the paper. Um, you can copy it and it just turns out that the size of my sticky note pad was just the perfect size that I needed for my key. So use what you have. You can use your edge of your sketchbook as a straight edge. I've done that a couple of times. All right. Okay guys, uh, welcome to my video tutorial on watercolors. So um, <clears throat> when you, when you uh, are ready to do watercolors, you know you're ready because first of all you've finished doing your drawing, you've gone over everything with dark marker, Sharpie preferably. Sharpie is waterproof, so that what that means is that when you go to paint, uh, it's not going to make the ink run. And then what you want to do is you want to get a little cup, and I'll have a station where you can get cups. And we're going to start by doing what's called a wash. Now to do a wash, we're going to use these liquid watercolors here, which are already mixed with water. But they're still pretty dark, so you're going to want to have a cup like this. And <clears throat> I'm going to start with doing the biggest area, which is my ocean. And then I'll let that dry, and then I'll go in and I'll do a wash to my um, smaller areas. I've got these sections in here, and my land is going to be different colors. Like I might do gray or something up here for the mountains. Or those grassy areas, I'm probably going to do green or brown, um, etc., etc. In fact, I'll probably do brown and then I'll do green on top of it in layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. You want to shake this watercolor up just a little bit, and then you want to just put some of it in your water, and you'll see it looks really, really cool when it goes. I don't know how much you can see this on camera, but when it goes into the water, it kind of does this cool, like little. Whoosh, thing but eventually you're going to want to stir it up and washes are always very light you want to start with a very light color because you can always make it darker with watercolor but once you get the color on your painting you can't take it off so you want to start light and you want to use when you're doing a wash a big brush because you're filling in a large area I'm going to go right over my sea serpent because he's probably going to be greenish color anyways. This color that I'm using here is turquoise. It's not blue. Turquoise is like green and blue mixed together. It probably has a little bit more uh, blue in it. It's mostly blue, but then it has a lot of green. And you're going to want to go light on the paint because this paper that we're using for these maps is not watercolor paint. It's just regular drawing paper so it can only take light washes. So that's another thing that you have to realize. If you start just dropping a whole bunch of color down onto your paper, your paper's gonna get saturated and it's possible that you could actually paint, get it so wet that the paper starts to separate and you have a hole or a tear. So you wanna go light. And it's all right because we've got plenty of time to work on this. We don't have to finish it all at once. It's not a race. Art class is not about racing. It's okay if you go a little bit into your areas with one color that you didn't mean to. You can go over the edges of shapes. 
if your wash is light enough, if you mixed it like I showed you with just a, you know, a, a lot of water and just a, a, a few drops of the color, then it won't be so dark that it's going to be a problem. So just start out light. We'll let it dry. You come back next time, you add a little bit more. Watercolors are always done in layers. All right, so you can see I've got a very, very light wash of this turquoise. And I'm using a big brush because when you do wash, you want to have a big brush so you can do it quickly because all you're doing is you're really just trying to fill in big areas. And another thing about the brush I'm using is that it's a flat brush. That means the tip of it is flat. So what that allows you to do is to take the corner and to go up into the little areas, little edges and things like that. So for washing, think of it like you're, you have a broom and you're sweeping an area. Now this area here where my key is, I'm, I'm not going to paint that area. I want it to be separate from the map. I want it to appear like it's separate. If you ever see a key, it's usually different. It's not part of really the painted part, although there are some maps that have the little icons painted and you're welcome to paint your icons if you want, but just to kind of set up a little bit of contrast here, I'm going to leave my key unpainted and I'm just going to carefully go around and I'm going to try very hard not to get down into the area of the key. If I go in a little bit, it's okay. It's not, not a big deal. This is a handmade artwork. It's not printed. It's not in a book or anything. It's made by hand. And we want to see that. It's an artwork. I will go right over the compass. The compass can have the turquoise mixed in. It's a light wash, so it's not really going to change the color of the compass. And I'll be able, when this is dry, this wash here that I'm doing, I'll be able to go over the compass and add more color on top. And it's still going to show because this is such a light wash that it's it's just giving a hint of the ocean. And then that way I can go in. My ocean doesn't have to be one tone of this turquoise. I can use lots of different tones. And that's what's great about a wash is that I can go right over that pirate ship too. Is that since it's so light, once you start to layer, you won't really notice certain things had the wash on top of it. When you start to layer darker colors on top of it, it kind of disappears or your eye doesn't notice it as much especially someone looking at your map I'm going over with a second layer here and that's going to darken my wash a little bit I'm being careful still though not to add too much water and you can tell areas that have a lot of water because the paper actually starts to get dark almost and if you were to hold the paper up you actually would be able to see through it a little bit because the paper is fully saturated so those areas I'm going to avoid and of course, when we go to put these in the dry rack, since they're going to be wet, we're going to have to handle them with extreme care so as not to uh, rip or tear them on the metal dry rack. All right, so that's pretty good right now. Just finish up my second layer on this side. And that's how you do a wash. And of course, I'm going to go through I'm not going to do it on camera because I think you get the idea, but I'm going to go through and do my washes for my land colors next. All right, I decided to go ahead and do my land color washes uh, on camera because there's there's a couple things I thought about that I wanted to, to explain. So I've got, for my land color, normally we think of land as like brown because it's made out of dirt, but I'm actually going to be using an orange just because Orange is very, very close to brown. In fact, if I were to put a little bit of a dark color into this orange, you can see it almost kind of looks brown right there. Um, it would it would start to turn brown. So um, I'm going to use this as a brown. It's a it's brighter, which is going to make my painting look more appealing. If you ever look at paintings by artists, very often what we think is brown is actually an orange color that they used, and since my paper is still wet along the edges of the land, I'm going to get a little bit of bleeding over um, from the ocean because I'm painting now wet on wet. So that's absolutely fine. It's actually kind of cool. It adds, a, again, a little, little handmade touch. 
Now here I have to be careful because there are some things, since my wash is slightly darker, there are some things that I don't want to pick up too much of this color. So like the castles and towers and things, I'm going to try to gently paint around them. But anything that I know later on I'm going to add green, I'm just going to paint that on top. So like the swamp area here, I'm probably going to go on top of that with green. And that's really not that big of a stretch because, well, the swamp grows out of brown grass so or brown dirt. It's green, green plants out of brown dirt, so in a way I'm being kind of literal in the way that I'm painting. But I am trying to be careful about um, where my buildings are, etc. Cities, towers. Anywhere where I get a little tiny bit of bleed over, it's actually possible to fix that, no problem. I painted right over my statues because this is a wash, so I'll be able to add color on top of that. And maybe they're rusty. Oops, I went over my wall a little bit. That's okay. Maybe I'll paint my wall red, and therefore it won't matter if I went over it with a little bit of an orange color. I'm using a different brush here for this one. I'm using a... Um, I'm using a uh, round brush that has a bit of a tip, a sharp tip to it, and that allows me to dress the brush. So what I do is I take my brush and I kind of just drag it along the edge of my water cup and I just weep, weep, and I can kind of almost go in between the cracks as it were, if you will. So I'm going to paint this whole landmass and the other, of well, the island and the other surrounding areas with this, tan, it's called tangerine color. And it does, it almost looks like a, like a light brown. Of course, I'm not going to paint the lake here that I have with this color. I'm going to go in, in with that with a darker turquoise, the same color I used for the ocean. later on down the road so this is kind of like while I'm while I'm working here this is kind of like the boring part this is like the this is like the sweeping the floor or mopping the floor boring part of art when you first start to paint and you're just filling in those big areas and creating that first layer of paint this is the part that's it's it's still fun because you're still painting it's not it's not horrible I'm still painting but um, it's still kind of a little bit boring at the same time because what is what is the most interesting part of painting is getting to do all of the little details and also building up layers of color one on top of the other and sh and showing how one color shows through another and things like that that's the real fun interesting awesome part of painting is layering colors and etc. So, but it's still fun. It's still painting. So there's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong. I'm going to add a little bit of water here to this color water down. Just a little, just a little bit of water. Stir, stir, stir. In this area here. Yeah, that's a little bit better. didn't lighten it that much. This watercolor is pretty strong. Pretty strong. There's a little boat right there, but I'm just going to go right over it. Little teeny boat. Now I left my mountains, but now that I'm thinking about it, I left them, but now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm just going to go right over them, and then I can add other colors on top. And that just makes my life a lot easier. That just makes life a lot easier. go right over my statues but I'm going to be careful not to go over these cities these little city air, metropolitan areas here maybe my statue is carved right out of the rock so maybe it should be brown anyways brown rocky color you get what I'm saying you you get me you got me I got you I know what you mean I know what you're saying bro Alright, so the island is pretty much done. 
go over here to the Egypt lands that's got the pyramids. We'll just and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if you go out of the lines a little bit. When this dries, you'll see that the color lightens up a lot. Especially if you added enough water. It lightens up a lot. And then with your detail brushes, when you start to go into the next layer with your detail brushes like you're supposed to, um, you get some nice colors starting to appear over this light background. It's kind of like when you build a house washes like the ground floor and then you build all the awesomeness on top of the ground floor that's kind of like what a wash is it's just the ground floor and you know the ground floor is kind of boring it's just flat it just kind of sits there but it ha but it's strong and it allows you to add on top of it so that's pretty cool so it's important it's important all right uh, I'm probably gonna go over a lot of, I'm just gonna go over these buildings so I don't feel like trying to go around each and every little building. And then washy, washy, washy. It's called a wash because you're washing the paper down. It's like you're washing the paper. I'm washing my paper down. Alright, well, ooh, I hate our hair. I thought that was going underneath it. Oh, careful. Okay, now the wash is going to be phase one. So once we get the wash down, that's going to be it for phase one. We're really just going to we're going to set these in the dry rack now. We're not going to um, continue painting because everything is wet and we need to let it dry and rest. So if you get done with the wash, then um, you're going to just want to put your painting in the dry rack and you can go and free sketch in your sketchbook. Alrighty, have fun.